of the appliances that you might want to try to generate. And also, if, if, we're, on, if we're back yo-yo, you're on your own and you have to create your own stuff, this gets a little hard. Create, creating your own energy gets really difficult. So yes, a generator is a wonderful solution. I personally don't recommend it. Because this generator, which is a Northern Tool or somebody in Lombok, okay, I can run nine hours on five gallons of gas. So if I allocated an hour a day, so five gallons of gas gives me nine days of running time. So, I mean, it could power a lot as you add up all the different things on the cheat sheet there about what could you power at one time, your refrigerator, or freezer, or blah, blah, blah. Um, so every five gallons of gas gives you nine hours running time. Now, Honda's come out with a model that they call the quiet one, which doubles that running time. But still you find that gasoline is precious. So what I recommend to friends is this guy instead. Now this is a little inverter. And it's only 2,500 watts, where that was 33. But an inverter that's tied to a battery can power an awful lot and it's silent. Now what I mean by that, well, let's see if I... So I think people who are smarter to put their money into this. I'll turn it on. This, this is made by Cobra, it's an American manufacturer. They'll come on and say, I got 12.6. And the light popped on. This is a 60 watt light bulb. And if you notice, it tells me on the inverter, I'm actually drawing 90 watts. So there's quite a bit of loss just to drive a normal light bulb, what, like what John was blowing up over there. Now just for fun, watch what happens when I take this out. And I'm, I'm not one of these guys that, you know, the power companies say, go LED, buy the high efficiency light bulbs. <coughs> I wasn't until I saw this. Okay, I'm still reading 12.6 on my battery. That's pretty good. It'll tell me that's my draw. I was drawing 90, 90 watts. Now it's so stinking low, it's not even registering. So that's incredible. So now I'm starting to convert my house to these LED things. That's pretty amazing. So. The bottom line is, if you buy a good battery and a good inverter, and you baby your battery, you'll get 6,000 cycles out of your battery. So that's 20 years. So what's babying means? If you, don't, if you don't draw it down more than 10% of its total capacity, um, that thing will cycle 6,000 times. So I could actually run quite a few hours a day for 20 years for almost the same amount of money as if I were to buy a generator. And I don't have to worry about gas. And the other thing is, what's amazing about that, I'm going to this guy and put in like a And you could hook generators to your battery and just charge up your battery, right? Well, and that's generators like, meaning like a solar panel or something else. Or yeah, so actually, and the irony of irony is there, there are some inverters that don't have the ability to then charge other batteries, especially like your hand tools and stuff. Ooh. This little guy will actually then charge other batteries and just work like a charm. So anyway, I'm going to put some water in here. Is that a marine battery? or what That's type actually thing? a golf cart battery. Huh? So marines, golf carts, deep cycles are rated differently like well, what's in an automobile, which is really cranking hours. You don't care about cranking hours when you're doing this kind of thing. You really want to know what the total load is, load is on the ability of a good deep cycle battery. Medical device battery, somewhat similar to that. Yeah. They're yeah. Ready for not leaking in. But anyway, so here's here's an option for you to consider. That a microwave will heat up all your food and it's silent. So if you're trying to cook food and stuff and you're worried about sheltering in place and stuff, instead of firing up a generator and burning up your gas. Track yeah, so you really can stay very silent and still be, you know, still have the ability to cook and provide for your family and stuff like that. But anyway, just a simple combination of a battery to an inverter, and you have all these different options of things. So anyway, it's a pretty phenomenal thing to consider. Um, these things are pricey just because they're really high-end golf cart batteries. Um, that's about a couple hundred bucks. This is like 180 bucks. 
uh, you add that together, that's about what I think what we spent on the generator. Mm. Yeah, I don't have to worry about gas. But now the question is, okay, you got to charge your battery, obviously. So you got to manage, okay, how, if you're babying it, trying to just get 10% of your load every day, whatever you're, you're sucking down to. Well, in Colorado, we have more sun days than any other state, you know. And we're back to having some kind of trickle charger on your battery system. Now, this guy is only 7 watts, but he's too little. So if you did the math on how many watts you're burning up based upon those papers in your hands, you could figure out, well, how many hours off of a solar charger would restore my battery? And the answer is, well, with a, that's going to change the number here on what, what wattage do I need being output by some solar panel. This is where you would have to add in, this little guy is about 40 bucks. <coughs> the, uh, the one you probably need is probably more like maybe 80 to 100. And it would probably charge your batteries every day. Just keep a so perpetual motion type yeah. thing. And they're more like about $100 or so. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. I notice this has a USB port. In that case, does it uh, not invert it and just keep it direct current from the battery? Or does it, uh, what's it do for the USB port, you know? If you don't know, I'm sorry. I don't know. I've never, I've never played with the yeah. USB. I didn't know it had a USB. It has a USB port. So it's an AP and it has another... <laughs> Uh, another like Cat5 port, yeah. but this is a USB port, so if it's just <coughs> the current, it might last even longer if you're just going DC to DC and not flipping okay. back. So, you get, a lot of, get an awful lot of loss. Yeah. Yeah. Likely has a PWM buck regulator, 5 volt output. But anyway, before, before people overreact and think, oh my gosh, the sky's falling, I need to go buy generators and stuff, the first question is, Okay, well, how much gas do you have at your house? Yeah, that's the reason <laughs> I And then when the refinery them. shut down, how much, how, when are you going to get refueled? Yeah. And then how about, uh, how about you just go to totally out-of-the-box thinking and just go something different? But uh, in Colorado, we have so many Sundays, that's actually not a bad alternative to consider before you start spending money on stuff. But there's... The, there's the guys in the solar business say the worst places in the country compared to the best places, you know, it's like... The, it's like only double the difference or half the difference. Really? So everybody can use solar. It's just how much can you use it, and what's what else you're using other than solar? Well, it's like you, you can always yeah. spend more than you make. Yeah. yeah. You can always leave your stuff. Isn't that from, isn't that interesting though? I I did not notice this until I just did that for Hoots one day. Mm -hmm. I gotta get a now. I'm sure it's just a function of the sensitivity of that meter. When it gets down so low, it just gives you zeros. But for to drive 60 watts, for it to take 90 off the system. Now you got to be careful also with your microwaves and anything else you're driving. This is a little cheapy from Walmart. It's 900 watts, and most of the things in our house here, everyone's big wattage on their microwaves. Um, remember, that's output. That's not what it takes on the input. So this little fellow, even though it's only 900 watts. Is probably sucking about twelve to thirteen hundred. So, and it'll show up on your, your list there. Of what what do microwaves go for? So, so yeah. So even if you got a really low end one, like you know, only gets a thousand or maybe twelve hundred, that's the advertised output. Hmm. What it takes to drive it is much higher than that. And that's where all of a sudden you can start exceeding the capability of whatever inverter you bought. So. Gotta do a little bit of math just to make sure you buy the right things. But that little 2500 from Cobra seems to be doing. Now, what's nice about it is it'll give you a beeping sound when the battery gets low to like about 10 volts instead of 12.2, 12.8. That's roughly 10%. So if you're trying to baby your batteries, the little Cobra will tell you, start to beep at you and say, uh, you're at 10%. So, uh, so you stop and you start charging up. So, Anyway, while we had you, we just want to make sure that you knew that we're not we're not purists. This is because we live in the lab and we try to make things break. And we think, well, oh, that makes sense. Now, this is the kind of things as we're re rewriting that that Colorado uh, emergency plan, and they kick you to. Oh, okay. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for the morning. For